Welcome to Black Journals, where we celebrate the rich history and culture of Black people around the world. Today, we're delving into a topic that may leave a bitter taste in your mouth as we uncover the dirty past of the tobacco industry and the slave trade. Now, we all know tobacco has a long and controversial history, but did you know that it's not just the addictive nature of nicotine that's dark? The story runs much deeper than that. In fact, the roots of the tobacco industry are deeply intertwined with the dark legacy of slavery and how enslaved Africans were ruthlessly exploited to advance this profitable trade. Imagine this. It's the 17th century, and tobacco is becoming a booming commodity in the American colonies. Demand is skyrocketing, and plantations are sprouting up left and right. But the question arises, who will do the backbreaking work of planting, cultivating, and harvesting this cash crop? Enter the horrifying reality of enslaved Africans. These men, women, and children were forcibly ripped from their homes in Africa, packed like sardines into the horrific conditions of the Middle Passage, and sold like property to work on tobacco plantations in the New World. Shockingly, by the late 17th century, the vast majority of tobacco plantations in the American colonies were worked by enslaved laborers. In fact, in Virginia alone, Enslaved Africans made up a staggering 70% of the labor force on tobacco plantations. But the horrors don't end there. Enslaved Africans were subjected to backbreaking labor from dawn till dusk, forced to toil in sweltering heat, exposed to toxic chemicals and dangerous working conditions, and ruthlessly punished for any perceived disobedience. Many died from exhaustion, disease, and the brutal treatment they endured, Yet their blood, sweat, and tears fueled the booming tobacco industry, generating immense profits for slave owners and tobacco merchants alike. So as we delve into the dark past of the tobacco industry, let's not forget the harsh reality that enslaved Africans were forcibly thrust into this trade, their lives and labor shamelessly exploited for the benefit of a few. Before we dive right into the video, please like and hit the subscribe button to stay on the channel. The history of the tobacco industry is intertwined with the history of colonization and the slave trade. The first documented cultivation of tobacco occurred in 1531 in the Caribbean island of Hispaniola, where Christopher Columbus's men observed native people smoking tobacco. The Spanish soon began to cultivate tobacco on a small scale, primarily for local consumption. However, it was the British who made the tobacco industry a global enterprise. The English colonized Virginia in 1607 and started cultivating tobacco in large quantities, which they exported to Europe. By 1614, the first shipment of Virginia tobacco arrived in England, and within a decade, tobacco became the colony's most valuable export. Tobacco became so profitable that Virginia's economy was dependent on it, and the English government even granted the Virginia Company a monopoly on its production and trade. The demand for tobacco grew rapidly in Europe, and by the 1700s, it was the most traded commodity in the world after sugar. Tobacco became an essential part of the European diet, with even doctors prescribing it for various ailments. In France, it was the French ambassador to Lisbon, Jean Nicot, who in 1599 first sent tobacco leaves and seeds to Francis II and his mother, Catherine de' Medici, indicating that tobacco should be snuffed. The king's recurring headaches were said to be wonderfully cured, even though he died in December 1660 at the age of 17. The myth of tobacco as an herb with almost miraculous medical properties was thus born and would fuel an already growing European demand. As early as 1660, the French also began to cultivate what they called the Queen's Herb, which botanically is called Nicotiana or Nicotine Herb, from which the word nicotine is derived. The tobacco trade not only brought wealth to European merchants and traders, but it also led to the development of the transportation industry. Ships were built specifically to transport tobacco, and the tobacco trade created jobs for sailors, dock workers, and other related industries. The tobacco trade also led to the establishment of banking and financial institutions, as merchants required loans and credit to finance their trade. However, the success of the tobacco industry was built on the backs of enslaved Africans who were forcibly brought to the Americas to work on plantations. Tobacco cultivation was labor-intensive, and planters needed a reliable and cheap labor source. The English colonizers initially tried to rely on indentured servants to work the tobacco fields, 
These were poor Europeans who agreed to work for a set number of years in exchange for passage to the colonies. But indentured servants were expensive to transport and had a high mortality rate in the harsh conditions of the Chesapeake Bay region. By the early 17th century, the colonizers began to turn to enslaved Africans as a source of cheap labor. The slave trade became a massive industry, with millions of Africans sold and transported across the Atlantic to work on tobacco, sugar, and other plantations. The first enslaved Africans arrived in Virginia in 1619. At first, they were treated like indentured servants, and some were able to earn their freedom after a set number of years. But as the demand for tobacco grew, the colonizers began to import more and more enslaved Africans to work the fields. By the 1660s, slavery had become the dominant labor system in the Chesapeake Bay region, and it would remain so until the Civil War. African slaves were considered the most valuable commodity in the tobacco industry, and their labor was used to clear land, plant and tend crops, and process tobacco leaves for export. The harsh and dangerous conditions under which they worked were nothing short of inhumane. They were forced to work long hours in the scorching sun, and the use of heavy machinery and dangerous chemicals put them at risk of injury and illness. The slave labor was justified by enslavers on the grounds that Africans were considered an inferior race and were therefore suited for hard labor. Slave owners often claimed that they were providing a valuable service to their slaves by giving them food and shelter in exchange for their labor. However, this was far from the truth. Many slaves were subjected to brutal treatment, including physical and sexual abuse if they did not meet their quotas. The conditions in which slaves worked were deplorable. They were housed in cramped and unsanitary conditions and were often forced to sleep on dirt floors. Disease and illness were rampant and many slaves died from exposure, malnutrition and disease. The harsh conditions also took a psychological toll on slaves, leading to depression, anxiety, and a host of other mental health issues. The intensive work required for cultivating tobacco only worsened the already deplorable situation. According to historian Philip Morgan, by the mid-18th century, Chesapeake tobacco planters expected workers to transplant a seedling every two minutes and to plant 350 hills per day. Once transplanted, tobacco seedlings required nearly constant tending until harvest. First, after a certain numbers of leaves appeared, slaves would use a small knife or a sharpened thumbnail to cut off the top of each plant to prevent it from flowering. During the summer months, laborers performed three additional tasks, weeding, suckering, and removing worms and beetles. All three of these tasks required workers to pay close attention to individual plants, to work hunched over, and to perform tasks by hand, all under close supervision. This work was not only gruesome but had severe consequences for slaves that could not keep up to quality. According to runaway slave John Thompson, who testified about the nature of the work, the tobacco plants were usually riddled with worms when ripe. These worms could be about two inches long and as large as a person's thumb. They were destructive to the tobacco crops and had to be carefully picked off by hand. While slaves would carefully inspect and get rid of the worms, they are not always lucky to have a worm-free plant. If a worm is found on the plant by their enslaver, they would be required to eat them. The results of feeding on pests could mean devastating health consequences later on, but slaveholders would do little to provide medical aid. While this gives some detail to the gruesome acts of slavery in the tobacco industry, it barely scratches the surface as to the torture and inhumane treatment enslaved people had to go through. According to escaped slave Luzit Clark, who recalled his experience on a tobacco plantation in Kentucky, slaves were required to stoop to clear the tobacco plants from the worms that infest them. They would do so for hours, leading to intense fatigue and back pain. However, slaves that chose to take a rest were quickly put in order at the crack of the whip. But despite these terrible conditions, enslaved Africans were able to develop a unique expertise in tobacco cultivation and processing. Enslaved Africans were skilled at growing and curing tobacco, and they were able to produce a high-quality product that was in great demand in Europe. They developed new techniques for fertilizing the soil, planting and pruning the tobacco plants, and curing and aging the tobacco leaves. They also created new varieties of tobacco that were resistant to disease and could be grown in a wider range of climates.
Enslaved Africans were also responsible for the labor-intensive process of hand-rolling tobacco into cigars and cigarettes. This required a high degree of skill and precision, and they were able to produce a consistent and high-quality product that was in great demand. They were also responsible for clearing vast tracts of land, planting and tending crops, and processing tobacco leaves for export. In the process, they helped to build the economies of many nations, including the United States. The profits generated from the tobacco industry played a critical role in financing the American Revolution. As the colonies began to organize against British rule, they needed resources to finance their war efforts. Tobacco provided a source of revenue for the colonies that they used to fund the war. In fact, some historians argue that without the profits from the tobacco industry, the colonies would not have been able to win their independence from Britain. The British also relied heavily on tobacco, and the colonists' ability to control the tobacco trade was a significant factor in their success in the revolution. The legacy of slavery in the tobacco trade is a haunting reminder of the deep-rooted injustices that have persisted throughout history. While the abolition of slavery marked a crucial turning point, its effects continue to reverberate even in modern times, including in the tobacco industry. The tobacco industry, which was built on the backs of enslaved Africans, has a troubling history that continues to cast a shadow to this day. Even after the abolition of slavery, exploitative labor practices persisted, including sharecropping, tenant farming, and other forms of labor exploitation that disproportionately affected black communities. This legacy of systemic racism has had long-term consequences, perpetuating a cycle of poverty, inequality, and discrimination. Moreover, evidence of modern-day slave labor in the tobacco industry has emerged, revealing that the exploitation of vulnerable workers continues to persist. In some regions of the world, including parts of Africa, Asia, and South America, reports have surfaced of workers being subjected to deplorable working conditions, low wages, and even debt bondage in tobacco production. These workers often face hazardous working conditions, exposure to harmful chemicals, and little to no access to basic labor rights or protections. According to the International Labor Organization, ILO, an estimated 1.56 million children are engaged in hazardous work in tobacco production globally. This includes exposure to harmful chemicals, long hours of labor, and denial of education, which are clear violations of children's rights. In countries like Malawi, which is one of the largest tobacco producers in Africa, there have been reports about widespread child labor and poor working conditions in its tobacco fields. Children as young as five years old have been reported to work in tobacco farms, often denied education and subjected to harsh labor. Zimbabwe is another African country where reports of exploitation in the tobacco industry have surfaced. Many workers, including children, are reportedly subjected to hazardous working conditions, long hours of labor, and low wages. In some cases, workers are trapped in debt bondage, unable to break free from debts owed to employers or middlemen. These scenarios are not only prevalent in Africa, but also Asia and South America. India is a major tobacco-producing country, and reports have highlighted issues of child labor and poor working conditions in its tobacco farms. Children, especially those from marginalized communities, are often forced to work in tobacco fields and denied access to education and basic labor rights. Indonesia is also known for its production of clove cigarettes and concerns about child labor and poor working conditions in the clove farming sector. In addition, Brazil, which is one of the largest tobacco producers, is in the same scandal of using debt bondage for labor exploitation while providing hazardous working conditions. It's important to note that these are just a few examples of regions where reports of exploitation in the tobacco industry have been documented, and the issue may also exist in other parts of the world. These reports are based on credible research and investigations conducted by reputable organizations, including human rights groups, labor rights organizations, and international bodies such as the ILO. It underscores the need for continued efforts to address and eliminate labor exploitation in the tobacco trade and ensure that workers' rights are respected and protected globally. The legacy of slavery in the tobacco industry is one that is hard to ignore. Today, the industry is worth billions of dollars, but we must never forget that this wealth was built on the exploitation of human beings, 
The tobacco industry is just one example of how slavery and exploitation were used to build the economies of great nations, and how these same nations continue to benefit from the labor of those who suffered and struggled under these harsh conditions. As we reflect on this topic, we must acknowledge that the struggle of slaves in the tobacco industry was not an isolated event. Slavery and exploitation existed in various industries, from cotton to sugar to mining, and were all part of the same system of oppression. It is estimated that between 1500 and 1866, over 12 million Africans were forcibly transported to the Americas to work as slaves. The impact of this heinous practice is still felt today. We must never forget the countless individuals who suffered and died in the pursuit of wealth and power. It is up to us to recognize this legacy and work towards building a future where exploitation and oppression are never tolerated. Thanks for watching.